giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now is able to create content thanks to viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hi, everyone. We are so excited for you to be joining us today for the Replay FLL Challenge Community Kickoff. The first thing that we are going to start out with is a video to um, to go over all of the missions for this year. This is our Sanjay and my I, 11th year in first, and we think that this might be the best one yet. We're so excited um, t for this upcoming season. So now let's take a look at the video. Let's take a look at the missions. Remember that you should always refer to the Robot Game Rulebook and updates for all details. If you have questions about rules, write them down. The next session is with referees and you will be able to ask them any questions you want. We will be looking at all 16 missions from the Replay Challenge. Before we begin, it is worth noting that Home has been changed this year and now includes the launch area. Also, the height limit has been removed at launch, although it is still there for the inspection. Your equipment must fit into either the small or large inspection areas. If it fits into the smaller space, you will get 25 points. You will receive two bags of white brick in your kit. Use these to build your model for M01, the model must use at least two brick and be four Lego studs in one direction. You will receive 20 points for delivering it to the gray area around the bench or the replay logo. MO2 is the step counter. You get 10 points if the pointer is on magenta, 15 if it is on yellow, and 20 if it is on blue. MO3 is the slide. If one figure is off the slide, you get five points. If both are off, you get a total of 20 points. If you can bring a figure home, you get 10 more points. If the figure is held off the mat by the heavy tire and touching nothing else, you get 20 points. MO4 is the bench. If the bench is flat down, you get 10 points. If the bench is down, you get 10 points for each hopscotch space with a cube in it touching the mat. If the backrest is out of both posts, you get another 15 points. MO5 Basketball a cube in the crate gets 15 points. If the crate rests on the middle height's white stopper, you get 15 points. If the crate rests at the top height's white stopper, you get 25 points. MO6 Pull Up Bar If the robot passes completely through the pull up bar's upright frame at any time, you get 15 points. If the pull-up bar holds 100% of the robot's weight at the end of the match, 30 points. MO7 Robot Dance If the robot's controller is partly over the dance floor in a dancing motion at the end of the match, you get 20 points. Any repetitive action will count. MO8 Bacha If both the share models only send over one cube and the color matches, 25 points per team. If the cubes are completely in the frame or target, 5 points per cube. If at least one yellow cube is completely in the target, an additional 10 points. MO9 
M09 is the tire flip. If the light tire is white center up, 10 points. If the heavy tire is white center up, 15 points. If a white center tire is completely in the large target circle, 5 points each. Don't let the heavy tire cross the red flip line even partly. M10 is the cell phone. If the cell phone is white side up and resting only on the mat, 15 points. M11 is the treadmill. If the robot spins the rollers and the pointer points to gray, 5 points. If it points to red, 10 points. Orange, 15. Yellow, 20. Light green, 25. And dark green, 30. Do not touch the pointer to move it. You will lose the points. M12 Row Machine. If the free wheel is completely outside of the large circle, 15 points. If the free wheel is completely inside the small circle, additional 15 points. M13 Weight Machine. Prior to the start of the match, your team gets to choose where you want the lever to start. If the stopper is under the lever and the lever setting is blue, you get 10 points. For magenta, 15 points. And for yellow, 20 points. M14 Health Units if the health units are touching the replay logo or the gray area around the bench, you get 5 points per health unit. You can also loop a maximum of 4 health units over a pull-up bar post for 10 points each. M15 Precision. If the number of precision tokens left on the field is 6, you get 60 points, 5, you get 45 points, 4, you get 30 points, 3, you get 20 points, 2, you get 10 points, 1, you get 5 points. Like last year, you lose precision tokens for interruptions. However, if there is a stranded cargo partially outside home, you must take it and lose the precision token. Thank you for watching. You can ask any robot game scoring questions during the referee ask me anything session at 4:30 p.m. Eastern. Okay, so we're back now. That looked really awesome. Sanjay, which was your favorite mission that you saw? My favorite mission is the pull-up bar. I think it will be really fun to see teams hanging. Maybe there will even be a team who puts a chicken up on there. The weight machine is also very interesting. It It's... We haven't seen a mission in the past where teams get to pick the starting location. Arvind, what do you think is different about this year's missions? Um, basically, what I saw is that there's a lot of technic um, elements to this year's field compared to previous years having a lot of system pieces. I think that it also makes the missions very quick to build. Even one person, it only took about three hours to build all of the missions. There's also a lot of new elements from the Spike Prime kit, such as the new frames and tires, which I think are is really cool. Sanjay, I have a question for you. Do you have any tips for what team should have on their robot for this year's season? Yes, I do. 
The first thing I noticed with this year's mat is that there are a lot of lines. This is perfect for line following or squaring up on lines. So I highly recommend that teams should add color sensors to their robots. If you have not used the color sensor in the past, we highly encourage that you learn it, learn to use it. Also, the pull-up bar is somewhat low. So I recommend that uh, you should consider a low robot design so that is, it is easier to go through the pull-up bar to get those points. Also, you need a light and well-balanced robot to easily hang. I totally agree with all those things you said, Sunshine. I think those are really great tips for teams when designing their robot. Now we are going to be talking a little bit about resources that teams can use for this year's season. Okay, before we get into the First Sega League Challenge resources, we are going to talk a little bit about First Sega League Discover and Explore. The main resources for these challenges can be found inside the set. Both Discover and Explore have a team meeting guide and an engineering notebook. This is great for teams. The team meeting guide is oriented for the coaches so that they can uh, help plan out the meetings and it provides guidelines for what should be run each meeting. The engineering notebook is great for teams so that they can document their past history and all the ideas that they have had. It is a great resource for teams who are just starting all the way to even experienced teams. So the Discover set in, has a model that is a obstacle course where there is a climbing wall, a hill, and a slide. The teams will have to design and build an obstacle course as part of this challenge. There's also six bricks and activities that are included and a Discover More take home set of six bricks for each student to play with their parents. Remember that this is a class pack only program. The explore teams will have to also create an obstacle course to play on that will have to focus on fun activities to raise heart rates. The team's model must use the we do system. They can choose to use the motor to animate the given model that is shown in, in the image on the bottom right side where there is a girl running on a treadmill to raise this flag that represents the heart rate. Yeah, so next we're going to be talking about resources for first LEGO League Challenge. There are three resources that teams will receive in um, their kit. There's a team meeting guide, a robot game rule book, and the engineering notebook. The team meeting guide will be helpful for coaches to plan out each of their meetings. The robot game rulebook describes all of the rules and missions for the season, and the engineering notebook is a great way for teams to document their season. The robot game rulebook is, uh, you should note that if there's updates to the challenge, you will need to check for those updates online on the website. Our team also creates a series of resources for teams to use, and these are all hosted on flltutorials.com under the resources tab. Every year we create an every, every year we create an electronic score for teams to self-evaluate themselves and track their progress throughout the season. 
It comes with built-in buttons for each mission, drop-downs, and sliders so that you can score your robot as it completes the run. So um, you can, there's even error checking that you can have with the score that we provide. For example, if you, if you have um, only, if you haven't taken any figures off of the swing, off of the slide, I'm sorry, off of the slide, you are not able to place any of the figures on the tire and home. So it checks for that and disables those features. In addition, for the health units mission, it checks to see the total number of health units that you've placed and make sure and make that sure it doesn't that exceed, exceed eight health units. Another tool that we have is the our strategy planner. This tool allows you to plan out your robot runs ahead of time. This is also very good uh, for planning out remotely because you can just simply draw on top of a field and then you can have a mission. For example, I can draw a line from base to the pull-up bar, for instance. Another feature is if you use the line tool, it will tell you the distance and the angle at which your line has been drawn which makes it also easy to, to create pseudocode or even a basic template of code when you're working uh, remotely because you can just find the distance to a mission digitally without having to have someone go measure it out for you. You can also save and keep track of your past runs. We also created a digital rubric for teams to self-evaluate themselves and track progress. We, you can score yourself on the innovation project, core values, and robot design rubrics as you practice. This allows uh, teams to uh, remember to evaluate themselves as, throughout the season because they can also save and reload their past rubrics to see how they have improved and meet the goals of the rubrics. In addition to the official worksheets that are provided in the engineering notebook, we provide supplemental worksheets for your engineering notebook. We have resources, for example, for um, testing different robots, for keeping track of different designs you created, and more, and you can share these with your judges. Because we know that some of you will have to work remotely, we have also provided them as Google Documents so that you can collaborate electronically. We have also created a series of worksheets for, to help teams with the innovation project. These worksheets help guide teams through the innovation project process all the way from uh, deciding a topic all the way to doing the research and coming up with a solution. But remember, always go back to the challenge documents and make sure that you have completed all the requirements of the season. Similarly, we provide documentation and worksheets for the core values part of First LEGO League Challenge. These include um, worksheets to help you learn the core values and document how you use them throughout the season. However, you should always remember that what's important is how you actually apply the core values on your team. Just like all the rest of the resources, we will provide them as Google Documents. The resources we have just talked about, the score, strategy planner, the rubrics and worksheets, are all available on flltutorials.com. We also have tutorials written by teams and Coach Chris Corner articles on FLL tutorials, free to use for all teams.
there are also other resources um, that you can find in addition to the ones that we just mentioned. If you have any questions, you can always check out the FLL Challenge and FLL Explore Share and Learn pages on Facebook. If you're a coach, we also recommend taking a look at the LEGO Education Community Group. There, you can also look at FLL Tutorials, as we mentioned earlier, for lessons and worksheets. We also run primelessons.org and ev3lessons.com so that you can learn about the Spike Prime and EV3 programming. And always take a look at firstinspires.org for all the challenge documents and stay tuned for updates to the challenge. So that's the end of the presentation. Uh, does anyone have any questions? So it looks like we had a question about what the max score is. Um, you can try out our score and find out for yourself what that max score actually is by checking off all the boxes and figuring out how you can maximize the points this year. I will answer a few more questions and then uh, at 425 we can wrap up. All right, so just jumping in chat, uh, this is producer Tyler speaking. If you do have any other questions for our panels here, we got a couple more minutes so we can do that. Please type that into the Twitch chat and we can do that. It could be anything in regards to the resources or if you just want to pick their brains or longtime FLL uh, alumni that had a lot of experience in it as well too. Um, otherwise, we'll be wrapping up in just a little bit here. Uh, so uh, Arvin and Sanjay, I do have a question for you. You know, looking at this year versus other years, how do you think this year's game compares from a robot game to maybe some other ones? Good question. I think that the robot game is still very similar in, in uh, difficulty-wise, but th this year, the, with the introduction of the new Spike Prime, we are hoping to see a lot of teams uh, start using the Spike Prime to complete these missions as, as well alongside the EV3. But other than that, um, the missions, as Arvin had said earlier, have a lot more technic pieces and, a and are a little more abstract compared to the past. But overall, I think it will be a fun experience for all teams just as any year. I, I do want to keep grabbing questions before we uh, wrap up because we only got about a minute left here, so we got to be quick. Uh, Lamascus asked, do you think the Sprite Spike Prime would be better on this year's field than the EV3? I think that both can be used equally as well, and then there's advantages to both systems, and that both neither one has an advantage over the other in the actual game, and that you can score all the missions with either system equally. All right, last question that we have here uh, from Grad Dave says, when will the worksheets be active? Uh, on the resources page, it is showing coming soon. They will be up today on the resources page on FLL tutorials. Right now, we have all of our scores and the strategy planner and the rubrics are all active right now. So, chat, we are going to have to wrap up here in a second. We'll take one more quick one. If we have more questions, we have other panelists later that uh, might be appropriate to ask these for, like referees and judges and coaches. Uh, so we'll take uh, from South Florida Robotics says, what is the size limit? So this year, the height limit at launch has been removed. However, there is still an inspection that occurs before the match where your robot ha and equipment has to either fit into a small inspection area or a large inspection area, and you get bonus points if it fits in the small inspection area. Okay. Okay, thank you. So now, next thank up in a little bit, we're going to be having a session for Ask Me Anything referees. So think about some questions that you have about this year's missions and rules, and you can ask them anything you want. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. 
Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.